Hello, in this video we're going to look at the pharmacology of Parkinson's, so the main drugs involved in the treatment of Parkinson's disease. If you haven't watched Park my video on Parkinson's pathophysiology, um, I recommend you watch that um, to get a better understanding of the disease, and so hopefully that will make this video a lot easier. Um, so Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative disease that affects a, an area of the brain um, known as a substantia nigra mainly this area. And um, in, in the substantia nigra, you have important neurons arising from there known as a dopaminergic neurons. And these guys, they secrete dopamine, which is important in essentially contributing to a controlled movement pattern. So let us look um, at a normal neuron in this area and compare it to the one in Parkinson's disease. So, so let's look at the normal one first. So here we have a dopaminergic neuron Dopaminergic neurons contain dopamine uh, vesicles in the terminal here. And these guys, uh, they, they are able to secrete dopamine. Um, and when they secrete dopamine, they will essentially um, either, either stimulate or it will inhibit um, these GABAergic neurons um, here. These GABAergic neurons are found in an area of the brain known as a chordate striatum. Um, the chordate striatum is made up of the chordate nucleus and chordate putamen. They, and again, these, this area contains GABAergic neurons, which receives information from the dopaminergic neurons from the substantia nigra. So these guys have dopamine receptors. When dopamine is released, it binds onto these dopamine receptors and either stimulates or inhibits the GABAergic neurons. Within the dopaminergic neurons here, uh, we have an enzyme, uh, monoamine oxidase. And these, are, these guys essentially break down the dopamine after it's being used. So it sort of helps in the recycling process. So Parkinson's disease is where we have degeneration of dopaminergic neurons. This means that we have no, like not much dopamine or no dopamine being produced by uh, the cells in this area. Now, these neurons um, in the central nervous system, in the substantia nigra, they're, surround, they're surrounded by, uh, uh, they're protected by the blood-brain barrier. Just an important side note. Okay, so again, in a Parkinson's disease uh, patient, we have decrease in dopamine in the synaptic cleft because no dopamine is being produced because the neurons are dying. Um, similarly, we have Again, the enzyme, of course, monoamine oxidase, which will still break down the dopamine if, if it were being produced. So essentially, the treatment for um, Parkinson's disease is to provide more dopamine. That is one logical reason. Um, so a drug that could be given uh, is, a, is known as levodopa. So levodopa... Um, is a precursor to dopamine. And it's given because it is able to pass the blood-brain barrier. Okay, so it can go into the neuron. Whereas dopamine cannot pass the blood-brain barrier. That is why we give levodopa. Unfortunately, in the peripheral system, or in just the blood vessels, levodopa can be broken down by dopamine uh, carboxylase to uh, dopamine. And so if it gets converted to dopamine before it reaches the brain, that's really not helpful. So usually um, we usually there's another drug which is given in, in combination with levodopa. Uh, these guys are known as decarboxylase inhibitors. Decarboxylase inhibitor, a main example is carbidopa. And these guys again, they prevent the peripheral breakdown of levodopa to dopamine, allowing levodopa to essentially move into the dopaminergic neurons that are left over to produce more dopamine. However, levodopa in the periphery can also be broken down to 3-OMD by COMPT. And so you, you also can administer a COMPT inhibitor. Again, COMPT inhibitors prevents the peripheral breakdown of levodopa. So if levod, so levodopa is able to pass the blood-brain barrier into the dopaminergic neurons. In the neurons, 
levodopa can be converted to dopamine by carboxylase, uh, do dopamine carboxylase. And so this neuron is able to produce and release more dopamine, um, lessening the symptoms, the signs and symptoms of Parkinson's disease. So those were these drugs, the levodopa is first line for Parkinson's disease. However, there's other drugs that could also be given and they target different things. So for example, you can actually have dopamine agonists. And these guys essentially bind and activate dopamine receptors. So they mimic the effects of dopamine. You can also administer um, monoamine oxidase inhibitors. So these guys inhibit the enzyme within the neuron that would other, otherwise break down dopamine. So they prevent, these guys prevent the breakdown of dopamine, allowing more dopamine to be used. Um, for longer periods of time. So I hope that made sense. Again, the drugs used, main drugs used are levodopa, which has to be administered with the peripheral uh, dopamine carboxylase inhibitors, such as carbidopa. And then you can also have the dopamine agonists or the monoamine oxidase inhibitors. I hope you enjoyed this video on the pharmacology of Parkinson's disease. It was just an overview. Thank you very much for watching.